This happened my freshman year of college. Tinder was new, and everyone at my university was on the app. I joined to see what all the fuss was about. Looking through profiles, I found a few guys that were really interesting, and this one guy in particular caught my eye, but we will call him Walter. I swiped right on Walter, and we matched. I was excited and kind of giddy because he was super attractive. He messaged me and I got butterflies in my stomach. We messaged on the app for maybe an hour. Typical conversation is happening. I asked what he did for a living. He asked what my major was. Harmless conversation. After a while, he asked for my number so we could text instead of message on this app. I gave it to him. He seemed nice enough. We messaged back and forth for a few days. Lots of flirty conversation and plans to hang out finally occurred. By the fourth day of conversation, he started calling me babe, which gave me mixed feelings. It was cute, but also a little weird. We didn't really know each other and had never met. I ignored it and continued on with the conversation. He started saying he wanted to be exclusive and he really wanted to see me in person. He was begging me at this point to come to his apartment to cuddle and watch movies with him and his dog. I told him that our first meet needed to be in public. I would not be going to some stranger's apartment. He said I was overreacting and kept begging. I ignored him for the rest of the night. The next day, he apologized and said he understood we needed to meet in public, so we made plans that weekend. The weekend came faster than I expected, and it was the day we were supposed to meet. Something just felt off, and I decided to back out. I texted him apologizing, saying my mum wasn't feeling well and needed to come home to help her with some house chores. This made him annoyed, and he said, Your mum is a big girl. If she needs you, she can call you. Just come over, and you can leave whenever to go help her. I really want to see and kiss you. I told him no, that I would be staying with my mum that weekend, and that was that. I only lived about 30 minutes from home, so I actually did go home to see my mum that day. After what he said about my mum, I started ignoring him, and the text started rolling in. Text after text, Babe, I'm sorry, please come over. Babe, I miss you. Are you going to come over? I planned on replying the next day that I was just busy with my mum. Then he started calling me. I had a total of 45 missed calls within a two-hour period. He left voicemails, saying he was sorry and he just missed me and wanted me to call him back. Similar voicemails continued almost the entire time I was home. My roommate texted me shortly after I finished dinner with my mum and asked if we could go out that night. I agreed and went back to my university dorm. Suddenly, the calls from Walter started to increase again. More texts, voicemails, and he started messaging me again on Tinder, asking why I wasn't replying to him. I wasn't planning on replying until I got a message on Instagram that said, why didn't you tell me you were coming back to town tonight? Getting this message really freaked me out. I replied to him and said, sorry, I've been busy with my mum. How do you know I was back in town? He said, well, I checked your Tinder, of course. Tinder doesn't tell exact locations, but has a within one mile status. This really freaked me out, and I messaged him back and said that he was being really creepy. He seriously had to be constantly refreshing my profile to see the distance change. The messages, calls, and voicemails continued. All were him now apologizing for making me feel weird about him knowing where I was. He was just, quote, worried about me. We had been texting for less than a full week. Less than a week. I told my roommate about it, so she decided to stay in that night. The last straw for me was getting a message saying, Look, I'm really sorry. I'm outside your dorm with flowers and chocolates. 
please forgive me. Oh, hell no. I called campus security and told them about this guy, and they never found anyone waiting outside any of the doors. I'm assuming he was in his car waiting for me to reply. I blocked him on all socials, phone number, deleted Tinder, and have never been back on since. I have seen him once out and about in the town, but he never recognized me, thankfully. Walter, if you ever read this, I'm glad we never met. Thanks for making me second guess every single guy I find attractive. This all happened when I was 19. I'm not the best looking dude, so I've never had much luck with women and I ended up on Tinder. I wasn't having much luck there either until the third month of using it when a blonde woman named Katie messaged me. She was pretty enough that I just dismissed her as a bot. It wasn't until three days later that she messaged me again, which was odd because bots almost never message more than once. I clicked on her chat and replied, then looked at her profile. What I saw was pretty generic, but definitely wasn't a bot's profile. We had been talking for like a month when she proposed the idea that I come see her. I was pretty reluctant as she lived nearly eight hours from me by car, but I had to admit I really liked her quite a bit and I had been thinking about asking if I could come see her for a while now. After a bit more badgering from her, I finally said I would take the drive to go see her. At this point, I had no reason to doubt she was who she said she was. We had video chatted every other week and called most days. I just assumed I got really lucky. Things did get a little weird on the way there though. She kept messaging me, asking me where I was and making sure I was still coming. At some points, when I took more than 30 minutes to respond, she sent me a slew of annoyed texts. Admittedly, I had chalked this all up to her being nervous about me coming to see her. I was pretty nervous too, so I couldn't blame her. I had a hard time finding the house at first. The directions she gave me were pretty confusing, and it was back through a series of gravel and dirt roads and a large thicket of trees. It was still about midday when I came onto an old looking house. It was her grandparents house and they left it to her in their will. She made decent money as a graphic designer so she was able to afford it. A window on the second floor was boarded up but it didn't look abandoned, just worse for wear. Katie's red buggy that she liked to talk about was parked in front of the garage. I took a look at my phone and texted her that I was here. She only sent a smiley face in return. When I got out of my car to go knock on the door, I noticed someone was looking at me from one of the second floor windows. I found it a little creepy, but figured it was just her father or something. She had told me that he comes to stay with her every now and again, so I ignored it and knocked on her door. She answered with a smile and gave me a kiss, which surprised me, and I followed her inside. We sat down on her couch and started talking about our plans when I asked her about her dad. You didn't tell me your dad was here, I said. Was that going to be a surprise, or? Katie looked confused and told me her dad wasn't there. I still thought she was keeping up the act, and I told her that she didn't have to keep pretending and that I had seen him looking at me through the upstairs window. Katie went pale and said that we had to get out of there now. We both ran out to our cars, and when I questioned Katie, she informed me that her dad wasn't there and that she had been home alone until I showed up. I called the police, and while I was on the phone giving the address, Katie gasped and pointed to the window where I had seen the guy last. He was looking at us from the window again. I got a better look at him and he seemed older and frail, almost like he hadn't eaten anything in a while. He left the window after he saw that we saw him. 
The police took half an hour to show up, and the whole time Katie was crying and mumbling about how she was an idiot for not keeping her doors locked. When the police finally did show up, one started asking me and Katie questions, and the other two searched the house. They came back out a little later and told me and Katie that while they didn't find anyone, they did find that the back door was hanging open. Whoever it was ran out into the woods, but the cops were sure the house was empty. After the cops left, Katie asked me to stay the night because she was too scared to be in her house alone right now. I gladly did, and we slept downstairs on the couch, as Katie's bedroom was the one next to the room the man was seen in. Katie had also brought out the shotgun that her father had given her, but she'd never used. I told her it was fine, the man's gone, but she insisted, saying she'd feel safer if we had it out. I'm glad she did. Later that night, I was still wide awake watching TV. Katie had somehow managed to fall asleep. From the kitchen, I heard the sound of a doorknob being turned. At this point, I wasn't even scared, I was just pissed. I flipped on the light in the kitchen and pointed the gun at the kitchen door. And there he was. The guy that had been in the house before was standing on the other side of the glass door. He was so shocked and I'm glad we had locked the door. The man unfroze and yet again ran into the woods. I woke up Katie and told her what had happened and called the police again. When they arrived, they did a sweep of the woods and yet again found no one. They told Katie and me that it'd probably be a good idea to stay somewhere else for the night. Me and Katie said our goodbyes. She was going to stay at her friend's house and I was going home. I left a little after Katie did. I was on the phone with my brother, telling him about what happened. My headlights were on. As I was talking, something caught my eye. That man was standing at the corner of the house, just watching me. I gunned it out of there and didn't even bother calling the police again. But I did text Katie and she said she was going to call them again. I don't think Katie ever even went back to that house alone. She always brought a friend with her and ended up leaving a lot of stuff behind because she couldn't bear being there. We went on a few dates after, but it didn't really work out. I feel like she associated me with that event and couldn't get past it. We still talk every now and again. As a bit of backstory, I was working at a small chain motel in the Midwest as a night auditor. So my hours were normally 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. With those kinds of hours and being a woman, I'm bound to have some weird stories. The scariest time I've ever had working there happened within my first month. So it was a little before my shift started and because I was single and 22, I was on Tinder before work. I matched with this guy who seems cool, a little goth or alternative, and into Ouija boards and tarot, which is my type, so I was hyped at the time. We talk for a bit, and I tell him I have to go to work. We say goodbye. Now, that night was my first night off training, so I was running the motel by myself for nine hours, I was already a little nervous, but then this vaguely familiar guy comes up to the front desk and asks for me by name. In my head, I've got red flags blaring at me because this dude is weird. Not by looks, but just by vibe. I tell him that I'm me and he explains that he was the guy from Tinder and he saw that I was less than a mile away so he went to go and see if I was possibly working at his hotel. That's right, the guy was staying where I worked. Red flag number two. I stay behind the comfort of my desk for two hours because this guy won't stop talking to me. 
mostly about how his ex left him, and how he beat people up, and how he wanted to bang me. Needless to say, I was uncomfortable, and this hadn't happened to me before in a work environment, so I did not know what to do. He finally decided to go to bed around 2 or 3 a.m., and I take a much needed smoke break. I go outside, and right after I spark up, guess who shows up? Creepy dude. I snooped a bit on his account, and he was a painter and was doing work locally, so he wasn't from here. He tells me about where he's from and keeps getting closer and closer to me. He asks if he can smoke green, which I said yes to, so he'd get away from me. I showed him where the cameras weren't, and he pulled me in, smelled my neck, and started grabbing my ass. I swiftly hit him, and told him he had better not touch me. I threw my cigarette on the ground, and grabbed my phone to call my boss before going inside. Creepy dude rips the phone from my hand, and proceeds to text himself. Now he had my number. The first thing he sends me is a grotesque picture of his extremely body-modded member. I have seen some in my day, but that was like nothing I had ever seen. Then came the creepy BDSM porn gifs, with captions like, I can't wait to do this to you. You know what room I'm in. Now, I'm already freaking out, and I don't know why I didn't call the cops, and my boss wasn't answering. So there's me in the back office having the panic attack of my life when I get one more video. Why I clicked on it, I'll never know. I refuse to say what I saw in detail, but it was a snuff porn film. Very violent, very sexual. I then locked myself in the back room, cried, and waited a few hours before proceeding to make hotel breakfast. The texts went on for a few days until I had enough and got the balls to tell my boss. He immediately kicked out the creepy dude and banned him from our hotel. His company is not even allowed to book with that hotel anymore. In hindsight, I should have called the police, but I was too scared. Creepy dude, let's never meet again. This happened a few years ago. For context, I live in England and was 23 at the time. I had come out of a serious long-term relationship at 22. We were engaged and I was absolutely broken. I didn't even think about dating, nor any type of love interest for a year at least. I had worked hard to put myself back together and had seen a counselor and was taking anti-anxiety medication. I decided it was time to try and find love again. Big mistake. I met a man on Tinder. He was 27 and seemed really friendly and we hit it off really quickly. We went on a fair few dates and saw each other for a few months. As the relationship progressed, he started to get more and more possessive. He didn't like the fact I had my own job, my own friends my own house, or a close relationship with my family. I knew I had to cut things off quickly because it was becoming too much to handle and I could not survive another horrific relationship experience. I was already too fragile. I told him I still wasn't ready to get serious with someone and needed to spend more time alone to look after myself. He took it well. Relief until he reached his own home and the texts and phone calls started. He called me all sorts of horrendous names and then would come back with saying how he's not worthy, how I'm amazing and he's just devastated he's lost me. I firmly told him that I had meant what I had said and that things were not going to happen. He accepted this for a while. I started getting requests from various social media that were fake accounts he had made. He called me on various numbers 
withheld numbers, public phone numbers. He turned up on my drive without warning. He turned up at my place of work and harassed a colleague. I threatened him with police action if he didn't stop and I moved back in with my parents as I did not feel safe at home. For months, he tried to contact me in various ways and it became exhausting trying to block him from my life. Then, one day, he changed his tactics. My grandfather had recently passed away and we were very close so I visited his grave weekly to put flowers on it and sit and think. I arrive one morning and there is a letter on the grave. Only myself and my family ever go there, so I was very confused. It was from Jay, begging me to take him back, telling me he would do anything and everything to make me his again. It got threatening towards the end, and I decided enough was enough. This had gone too far. I contacted the police and had a restraining order put in place. I'm still not confident enough to date again. I guess you could say I'm scared. Anyway, graveside caller, please let's never meet again and stay away from my family. So I matched on Tinder with a very innocent looking girl who seemed to actually be pretty nice and interesting. We set up a date and even though I just wanted to hook up, the conversation was actually incredible to the point where I almost want to see if I'd consider dating her, which makes what comes next all the more surprising. Regardless, we leave the bar and at this point it's about 12am and we're in the middle of a plaza Seems pretty quiet, but it is a public area. As I'm walking her to her car, she suddenly pushes me into a wall and jumps on me, like literally so I'm carrying her. She starts kissing me and everything feels right. Things are getting hot and heavy, and that's when she bites my neck hard. Not in a cute, sensual way, more in a blood is now running down my neck and back way. I push her away and ask her what the hell. She hits me with a can't handle me. This catches me completely off guard and I tell her I'm down to be a little rough but don't make me bleed. She then grabs my hand and shoves it down her pants. Again, it's late and there aren't many people around but it is a public place after all. Being a man though, I'm dumb and don't think about any of this nor about the fact that my neck is still bleeding. She should have honestly asked me before she did any of that, and I probably would have still agreed just to experience something new. It's more the fact that she didn't build up to it, and we were essentially strangers. So she asks to come back to mine, and I oblige. We start going at it, and she keeps telling me that she needs me to bleed more, I give her free rein to scratch my chest, arms and back, but tell her nothing on the face, groin or neck. She agrees, but says it isn't enough and that I need to make her bleed. I'm really not into it, but hell, I'll try anything twice. I tell her that on the condition that I can film our rendezvous in case she wants to scream any false allegations in the future. She agrees and this leads me to slicing her leg with a pocket knife that she has handy while she's licking the blood from my chest. She comes way the hell down after this and actually cries while we're cuddling. She leaves and thanks me for not being weird. We ended up hooking up a few more times after that but ended up stopping because I just wasn't into the whole blood thing. Nice girl though. It was 2018 and I had just moved out of my parents' place for the first time into a little flat in my local area. I was 24 and was also newly single, so decided to download Tinder to see what it was all about. 
I started chatting to some guy. Truth be told, I was actually talking to a few guys over the course of a couple of weeks or so. Anyway, this guy asked me out, and I wasn't feeling it, so made up some excuse. We continued to chat for another week or so. Now it was Friday evening. I had just finished work and was walking home when I checked my phone and had a message from this guy asking me out again and asking me what time I wanted picking up. I made an excuse again and dismissed it. I finally got back home to my flat and began my weekly routine of cleaning and sorting out my laundry when I heard a knock at my door. I wasn't expecting anybody. I stopped what I was doing and walked into the kitchen and peered out of the window to see who it was before I opened the door. Stood there was a dark-haired man holding a small bunch of flowers. I was confused. I opened the door and I can only imagine how confused I must have looked. He said his name and I just stood there, confused as to how he even knew where I lived. He continued to tell me to get my coat and that we were going out, but I kept telling him I couldn't go. I asked him how he knew where I lived, as I had only just moved in, and he said that he would tell me if I went out with him. I refused. He then asked if he could at least come in. I said no. It took me a solid ten minutes of back and forth talking before he left. When he left, he gave me the flowers and said bye. Thankfully, it was broad daylight, and I had neighbors opposite my front door watching in the corner of their eyes. I'm pretty careful with what I put on social media, even more so now after this happened though. I thought about telling him that I just wasn't interested, but a part of me wondered what if he had a weapon or tried to force his way in, and then the nicer part of me didn't want to upset him either. I'm not very good in those situations. Anyway, once I closed my front door, I messaged him, asking again how he found out my address, and he wouldn't tell me. He just kept saying how he knew people. I then followed this up with a message telling him not to contact me ever again, and that him showing up uninvited is not acceptable especially when I never told him where I lived to begin with. I threw the flowers he gave me in the bin, and to this day, I have not spoken to him since. I also moved out of that flat after my six months initial term was up. I'm guessing he was trying to be spontaneous and romantic, but it just ended up being super creepy. I hope I never meet him again. I matched with this girl on Tinder, Jenna. I super liked her on Tinder when we first matched. Jenna and I went on our first date on January 26th. She knew I was out of a long-term relationship and still maintained occasional contact with my ex, Mary. Jenna and I officially start calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend around mid-February. Three days ago, while I'm in the shower, she goes through my phone and reads old messages between Mary and me. A few casual ones and a few very affectionate ones from before Jenna and I started seeing each other or even met. Jenna packs all of her things and is heading out of the door when I get out of the shower with my phone. She texts a bunch of people saying things like, I'm an asshole and Mary is a manipulative bitch. She hacks into my Facebook and makes a post calling Mary a whole slew of names and blocks and unfriends several of my friends. She does a similar thing with Twitter. I get hold of a co-worker's phone and use it to try and contact her and sign back into my Facebook. Once she realizes I did this, she changed my passwords and my email passwords as well. Since she had my phone, it was signed in to most of my things, including my email, which she used for all the password recovery. She just went in and changed the passwords. 
She gives me my phone and makes me call Mary and tell her I'm cutting her out of my life. I got hold of Mary earlier and warned her something like this might happen. We both have a background in theater, so we had a very convincing argument over speakerphone so Jenna could hear. Jenna gives me my passwords and I immediately change them. I tell her she should leave and she doesn't understand why I want her out of my life. She goes home very upset about me breaking up with her over this. Jenna starts posting and commenting on my Facebook and I block her. I blocked her on everything and she begins calling me over and over, not saying anything when I try to pick up the phone. I block her number. I start receiving the same calls over and over from a Colorado number. I live in Canada. Eventually, I go to my phone provider and change my number. I also change the locks on my door in case she took a key. The next day, she makes a Facebook page calling me a piece of crap and Mary a manipulative person and she hacks into my alternate Twitter account. I tell her if she calls me one more time or posts one more thing about anybody I know, I'm calling the police. I get an email saying that my application for a credit card with a bank I don't even use has been approved. I call the bank and tell them what's happening and they put a freeze on the account. Several friends have told me to call the police and I finally realize enough is enough. The police come and tell me that she has some sort of file with them and that her name isn't even Jenna, it's something completely different. They issue a warning of harassment and if she tries to contact me again, I call the police and she gets arrested. On Monday, I have to call the fraud people to get my accounts frozen and investigated and stuff. I realize this is a lot, but this is actually a pretty bare bones version of the story. Basically, the reason I'm posting this is now the police have got involved and I've had my locks changed and my number changed and all is quote solved. I'm starting to feel the emotional damage of being abused and harassed by someone that I was really starting to care about and I don't know how to deal with it. So about a year ago, I moved into a new apartment and it was my second year living alone. The city was relatively small and I go to the local university there. One night, I was bored at home. I decided to set up a Tinder date. I was talking to this apparent normal guy and he asked if he could come over to my place. At the time, I did not see anything wrong with that, so I invited him and said I lived alone. About 20 minutes after the message, he arrives at my apartment wearing a black hoodie, big earphones, and he asked if there were security cameras in the hallways. I said there was a couple, and from that, I could feel that I had made a mistake. He came into my apartment, and we made out for like 10 minutes in my bed. Then, he asked if he could, quote, try some of his kinks on me. At that moment, I was not thinking rationally anymore, and I said yeah. He started biting my neck, then my chest, then my legs, and then... He started with some really weird kinks. He started pinching me really hard in the between me down there, pulling on my skin and really digging his nails into my body. At this time, I was completely panicking and was asking him to stop, but he wouldn't. To top things off, he started choking me and I couldn't get him off me because he was like this big buff dude. At last he stopped and I rushed into the bathroom saying I needed to pee. In no time, I grabbed a knife, locked myself in the bathroom and called my other friends to come help me. I got out and told him to get the hell out of my apartment or I would call the police. To my surprise, he tried to attack me but I had a knife in my hand and I started screaming. 
After hearing my doorbell, he quickly got dressed and rushed down the stairs. Please be careful when bringing strange people into your home. This scared me for life, and I don't think I can do Tinder dates again. Yes, I was very careless at the time, and very naive. I must say that at that specific time, I was somewhat horny, and that's why I let him inside in the first place. Since then, I've learned to be more careful, and to only invite people that I know to my house. I know this is like a pretty obvious thing to do, but it was my first year living alone, and I didn't think of the problems at the time. Also, I keep a huge knife under my bed if I feel something shady is about to happen. I went to the police the next morning and described his facial features. Also, I gave them a screenshot of his profile, but it's been a year and they haven't told me anything yet. For clarity, I'm a straight 21-year-old female. So in November of 2016, I went through a pretty bad breakup. In October of 2017, I finally felt comfortable enough to try to get back into the dating world. So, like a moron, I got on Tinder. And it wasn't my first rodeo with Tinder, but this was the strangest thing that happened to me. So towards the end of October... I met a guy named Dave on Tinder, and from the looks of it, he was an okay guy. He was funny and a gentleman, didn't ask for anything inappropriate. It seemed fine. We talked for about two weeks and set up a time to go on a date. We decided to meet in the city where he had recently moved to, which was about 35 minutes away from my house. I got to the bar to wait for him and he was 15 minutes late. He walked in and looked relatively similar to his pictures, which I was happy about, and then he opened his mouth to talk, and he had a very strange voice, like he was always on the verge of crying. Very weird. He had some tattoos on his arm, including the all-seeing eye Illuminati symbol. Trying to break the tension, I jokingly said, Illuminati confirmed, tell me all your secrets. And he goes, what the hell are you talking about? Don't say that kind of stuff in public. I just kind of laughed it off, and he was being really weird. He then says, you know that people who pry are people who die. I just looked at him, and I genuinely did not know how to respond. Fast forward about 20 minutes, and a couple of my friends came to the bar at my urging. I moved to sit on the same side as him, so that my friends could sit on the same side of the booth. The minute I sat down, he puts his hand on my knee and squeezes. And not like, oh, I'm interested, but a hard squeeze. I looked at him to stop, and he leans over and whispers, You have lovely kneecaps. Like, boy, what? By the time my friends left, which was about an hour into the date, he had had seven beers. It was a Tuesday. As I go to close my tab, he stands behind me, and he has a boner, full mast. I very quickly signed my receipt and stepped away. As I'm getting ready to say goodbye, it starts raining, and he then informs me that he walked to the bar from his house and asks for a ride home. Reluctantly, I agree, and on the very short drive to his house, he informs me that it's not actually his house and that he is living in his sister's basement. When I finally park in front of his house, he leans over to kiss me and I try to give him the cheek and he physically turns my head and puts his entire tongue in my mouth. So I pulled away and this guy did it again. I finally pulled away and said, Get the hell out of my car. And he responds with, I am in love with you. I knew from the moment I saw your pictures, you have to come inside and meet my sister and her husband. I told him that if he didn't get out of my car, I was calling the police. He then started tearing up and got out of my car. 
So weird, boner, Illuminati guy. Let's not meet. I was 21, recently became a police officer, and was also recently dumped. So my friend suggested Tinder. As a 21-year-old new cop, I had the I'm invincible and I can take on anyone mentality. I matched with a very good looking out of my league female. We chatted and eventually set up a date to meet. She said she had a great open field to look at stars and hang out and we could meet up at her house. So the night came, I was excited and she seemed to be excited when I picked her up. She guided me to the field and it looked nice. Open space, woods, deer, and other wildlife. In the field, I noticed really dim headlights in the distance. Then, the van started driving towards us and pulled up in front of us, almost close enough to block me from going forward. I told her to stay in the car and I'll go say hi. I grabbed the flashlight I had in the car and walked up. In the front driver's side of the van, there was a decently sized man. I asked him what was going on and if he could back his car up a little bit. He was very polite, said he was the owner of the property and said he didn't mean to scare us. He told me he's been having trouble with poachers on his property and just wanted to make sure we weren't going to be shooting at anything. I assured him we only came to look at the stars and wildlife. He was perfectly okay with that, told me to have a nice date and drove away. After that, the girl was texting non-stop. Around an hour later, I saw headlights coming towards us again, this time at a really fast pace. We hopped in the car and I moved it into a defensive position. The same man came close enough to almost hit my car. She hopped out of the car at this point and ran towards the guy. I immediately knew I was screwed. I got out and gave them commands to back up and get on the ground. Neither of them complied, obviously. He then proceeded to charge me and knock me to the ground. Luckily, I was able to get him onto his back and get up. I saw my date grab a metal pipe from the van. She told me they had a gun and to give them my money and truck and I won't get hurt. Of course, with my I'm invincible mentality, I said no. She started to cry and saying they didn't want to hurt me. He then started to go back towards the car. At that point, I told them I was a cop, drew my concealed firearm and told them to lay on the ground. After a moment of shock from all of us, they complied. Off duty, I carry a G19. On duty, we all carry G22s. I almost didn't carry that night. I was 50-50. I'm damn sure glad I did now. I was able to call 911, tell them my name and badge number. I had two at gunpoint. I needed backup immediately. I gave our dispatcher the best directions I could to this field. While on the phone, they both fled. Again, stupid new cop young guy mentality. I chased them. I took off after the man who ran into the woods around the field. I chased him for maybe 30 seconds and heard three loud pops and saw muzzle flash. My invincible mentality went right out the window. I ran like hell back towards my car and peeled the hell out of there. I went back to the area I picked her up in called dispatch again and had officers come to that location. Of course, the first officers to pull up was my sergeant and my field training officer. Of course, they were both completely understanding and didn't give me any crap about it at all. The most used words were dumbass and stupid rookie. When we went back to the house, it turned out it wasn't her house. She had been waiting outside for me to come get her. The homeowner didn't know her at all. I hopped in their car and went towards the field. 
Luckily, the van was still there. I was told to shut my mouth and only come out if they started getting shot at. They cleared the area and started looking in the van. They found meth right in the center console and searched the car. What scared me the most was when my field training officer and sergeant came back to the patrol car, let me out and told me to come look in the back of the van. Both of them were pale, looked horrified. I went to the back of the van where there were several knives, duct tape, lighter fluid, a decent amount of rifle ammunition, handcuffs, and what looked to be dried blood. In the front seat passenger side, we found an AR-15 style rifle and two more handguns. We called for immediate backup and detectives. When they investigated the blood, it turned out it wasn't blood. The plates had been stolen and the van was a reported stolen. I was almost completely ready to get stabbed or shot. After I fought with the guy, I remembered what my FTO had made me repeat a million times. If it comes down to it, one of us is going home and it's going to be me. After that, all that training came in. The scariest part for me was how close I was to having to pull the trigger. For a second, I had aimed him up, finger on the trigger, and pulling the slack out. Having to kill someone is my worst fear in the world. They were eventually apprehended. Our CSI techs were able to lift prints and find out he had a previous record and arrests for robbery and was a registered sex offender. He immediately gave up his partner. There were about a million red flags I should have caught on to especially being trained to catch red flags. It's embarrassing to admit, but I definitely was not thinking with the right head. I heard secluded space, stargazing, and I was sold. I also had the I'm 10 feet tall, bulletproof kind of mentality, which went right out the window after that. It was creepy and scary as hell, but I'm glad it happened. It definitely squashed that invincible mentality. I still get hell about the whole encounter, but luckily no one got hurt. I will never use online dating again. Ever. I've been drugged or roofied three times once in high school and twice when I was in college. I'm no stranger to the effects of being drugged and it's a brutal experience as a whole. My worst was my third and hopefully last time it had happened. At the time, about 22 years old and finishing up college, I was using Tinder and had met a few folks where we chatted, had gone on some dates etc, nothing very serious. This one week, I had two dates planned. The first one on Friday with an EMT for sushi and drinks downtown, and the second for the state fair on Sunday. Come Friday, I ironically had left a note for my roommate at the time with the EMT Tinder guy's name, his Facebook info, and general info because of my hyper paranoia. Yay, anxiety. He picked me up and we went to sushi. First and foremost, this had to be one of the rudest men I have ever encountered. I'm talking yelling at waitstaff, complaining about everything, and being a general dickhole. I was completely over any interest in this guy almost immediately, but I didn't want to be the date and dash kind of person. So I finished my beverage, excused myself to the bathroom, and mass texted some friends about meeting up downtown so they could save me from him. A pair of friends already planning on going out agreed to meet me out. In the meantime, Arshat and I go to the local bar to grab a beer. I buy us two bottles, trying to be smart here having been roofied before, and don't let it leave my sight. We drink them, and he, of course, continues to be a douche. Eventually he asks if we want to go somewhere else. 
since it was encroaching on the time my friends say they were going to be downtown to meet me, I suggested the spot where the save was going down. We walk there, burning off the two and a half rolls of sushi I ate, one margarita at dinner, and one beer from the last place. Now keep in mind that I am not a lightweight, and at five foot eight and 135 pounds, I can handle my drinks, especially when spread out over the course of about three hours or so. We arrive at the bar and get another drink. I ordered a vodka soda and he has a beer. We go and sit at a table, positioned so I can see the front door, and sort of chat as I'm trying not to say anything rude to him for the way he treated people at the restaurant and more. Finally, my friends walk in and I jump up and call their names. Thank God they're here. They walk over and say hey. I half introduce them to Tinder Turd and step aside from the table to give them a hug and ask them to come with me to the bathroom. I turn back towards the table where the guy is sitting, also where I left my drink for about two minutes. Stupid me. And my friends and I head to the bathroom to plot my escape strategy. The plan was for me to go with them to the bar to get a drink. We would get lost in the crowd, they'd get a beer, and we would head out. It worked just like that too. I finished my drink and walked out the bathroom with them to the bar. They chugged a beer and we went to walk out, out of sight of this guy. At this point, it's like my world started spinning. I feel really loopy and know something isn't right. But I push myself to get out of the bar, thinking maybe it's just my anxiety of me ditching this douche or bad sushi. Here's a hint. It wasn't sushi. As we walked out of the bar, I start blacking out. I vaguely remember my arms around my friends as we walk down the sidewalk towards another bar. It seems the guy saw us leaving and he comes running out after us. He proceeds to ask my friends if I'm okay. Where am I going? Can he come with? Are they sure I'm okay? Maybe he should take me home. They tell him to bugger off, and we are going to see a friend of ours down the block. He leaves. The next thing I remember is waking up the next day. Vomit everywhere. No clothes. Bruises all over my body. Wicked headache. Apparently, the rest of my night went like this. I kept telling my friends I think I was drugged, but they thought I was saying I think I'm drunk. They didn't know how much I drank before I met up with them. At one bar during the night with them, I collapsed in the middle of the dance floor and security had to carry me out. My friends opted not to call an ambulance and sat me at a table just outside the bar. They called the last person I texted, which was the second Tinder date I was supposed to have later in the week. As a side note, we had not met yet and said that I was really messed up and asked if he could come get me and take me home. He did. Apparently in the car home, I was quiet and just kept saying I was drugged and asking who he was. When we arrived at my house, I opened the door and began to projectile vomit all over the parking lot. Being that I could hardly stand, I was collapsing onto the pavement, slamming into cars, etc., the to-be Tinder date that brought me home picked me up and carried me into my house. He got me up to my room and I crawled into the bathroom, making a lot of noise and more. My roommate came out of her room and was like, Who the hell are you? What the hell did you do to her? And is ripping this dude who genuinely did a really good thing by helping me when he didn't even know me. He explains to her what he knew when I kept telling him and that he was just helping me get home safe. He really was. At that point, there is a loud as hell thud in the bathroom. Apparently, I had stripped down into my undies, threw up all over, attempted to throw up again, slipped on my bath mat, slammed my head onto the side porcelain bathtub, leading to a very bad concussion. 
My roommate is freaking out, trying to tie up my vomit-soaked hair, while I am trying to crawl out of the bathroom, and I'm crying, etc. The Tinder guy who helped me leaves. I wake up in shock, covered in bruises and vomit with a massive concussion. What sucks the most is that after my friends convinced me to go to the ER to get myself looked at, the doctor gave me a massive lecture on mixing drugs with alcohol. There was a plethora of anti-anxiety meds and sedatives in my system with some alcohol, of which I had been prescribed some of the anxiety meds in the past, but knew better than to drink and take them, because they can seriously mess you up. And I had not taken them in a month plus, because I never got a new prescription. I tried to explain this to the doctor, but she rolled her eyes and alluded to the fact that I had seemed like someone who enjoyed a good time and should try to be safer in my decisions next time. Screw that doctor. To top it off, I had posted a Snapchat story of my friends with me in the hospital with a shout out to their support in being there with me for hours and the creepy ass doucher Tinder guy messages me going, why are you in the hospital? Did something happen last night? I hope you don't think I did anything to you. Yeah, okay buddy. That doesn't scream guilty as hell. Anyway, creepy Tinder drugging douche. Let's sure as hell not meet again. As for the Tinder guy who brought me home, there was no great love story that came from it. He was a nice guy, but there was no real chemistry and I definitely feel like my friends weren't the best of friends in that situation.